Well, how wonderful to see someone here in Town Hall for such a wonderful occasion. Uh, as we swear in, Andrew Whitman, our new tax receiver. Um, yes. <laughs> Don't sit in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell him, but. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Starting off great. He's just, I sat in the supervisor's he's chair. He's just <laughs> trying it out for when I would have to leave in six years. Oh, boy. <laughs> I think it's on. It is. It is. Maybe it, it, it was best you couldn't hear what I said. <laughs> anyway, I, I'm just so pleased and, and honored to be welcoming everyone here to Town Hall for really, as I said, such a wonderful, wonderful occasion. Um, let us begin with the Pledge of Allegiance that will be led by Andrew Whitman IV. So Andrew, would you come forward? And everyone, no, I'll give you this. How's that? Okay, you'll take that. And ask everyone to put their hand over their heart. And you may begin. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. You did a fine job. He did a fine job. Thank you so much. Well, um, I have a few comments I wanted to make about Andrew, but before I do, I just want to recognize some of the people that uh, were able to join us today. First of all, from our town board, uh, we have Councilwoman Mary Kate Mullen. And Councilman Jim O'Connor. And I see in the audience that we have New York State Senator Phil Boyle. And from the town, we have our Director of Economic Development, John Walzer. We have Chairman of the Zoning Board of Appeals, John Lorenzo. And we have the Chairman of the Islip Town Conservative Party, John Flynn. And I think tucked away somewhere, I see the Superintendent of Schools from East Islip, John Dolan. And uh, I think that's for the titles, but we have members of the, the Planning and Zoning Board, and, and thank you so much for joining us. I know it means a lot to, to Andy. Um, and Joe Stasi, who uh, is a good, good friend, uh, to many of us here in the town of Islip who worked real hard with Andrew. So, uh, thank Joe, you. thank you for joining us today. <laughs> and I think some of the most important people that are joining uh, to Andrew anyway here today is his wife, Jennifer, and his three children, Catherine, Andrew, and Giuseppe. <laughs> Which is, is kind of special to me because that was my dad's name. So um, I'll continue with those remarks, but I think we should go to the um, invocation, and that is going to be delivered by Father Brian Ingram, who is from St. Lawrence of the Martyr uh, Church, Roman Catholic Church in Sable. Father? Good afternoon, everyone. Good to see you. Uh, this is a, a first for me. I mean, I've, I've said prayers or offered invocations in any number of situations before, but never for a, a swearing in of a, a public official. So uh, I'm very privileged to be here um, for one of my own parishioners um, and one of our best lectors at St. Lawrence. Um, so uh, perhaps I'd invite you to bow your heads as we ask for God's blessing on Andrew and on all of us gathered here, certainly on our town and our nation. Loving God, gracious and always good, we bless you at this turning of the year and on the threshold of another celebration of this beautiful national holiday of Thanksgiving. As we gather together, we lift up our hearts and our voices to thank you for your goodness, for enfolding us, surrounding us each day 
in countless ways with your mercy and your love. We bless you in a very special way for the gift of our nation, our beloved country, so richly blessed among the nations of the world, and for this small part of it that is the town of Islip here on Long Island. We thank you in a very special way for Andrew and for in thanksgiving for his election to this important post within the governance of our town. We ask that today and each of the days of his term that you let your spirit rest upon him, giving him a spirit of wisdom and of diligence, of uh, genuineness and honesty, of deep purpose and real conviction and commitment to the people whom he serves. As he helps to oversee the financial well-being of our town, we pray, Lord, that you would bless him in his work and bless all of us in turn. Help us to be ever more responsive to one another, ever more thankful for your gifts, and ever more compassionate and caring to those who are hurting and in need. We ask all these things, gracious and good God, in your holy name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Father Brian. That was beautiful. You know, I was listening carefully, and all of the attributes that the good father asked the good Lord to bestow upon Andrew, I think he already enjoys, and they're only going to be embellished in his service to the residents of this great town of Islip. Um, you know, Andy is the owner and founder uh, of my New York Home Solution. And, you know, having been an entrepreneur, a business owner, it brings a specialness to, to his new role that he's going to be having here in the town of Islip. And certainly his service as a firefighter with the Fire Department of New York. Uh, this was his childhood dream, fourth generation of service in his family. A 27-year member of the Bayport Fire Department, also an active member of Sable Civic, Sable Chamber, the Rotary Club, of Sable, all of these um, areas of service, also to the youth of our community with the Bay Min Youth Soccer Coach, uh, also in service to the town uh, when I reached out to him years ago and asked if he would serve on our Economic Development Commission. He didn't hesitate. He serves there. And as Father Brian said earlier, one of uh, his outstanding lectures at St. Lawrence the Martyr. Um, so all of this is the sense of community and caring he's bringing to his role as the tax receiver. And um, I think that is going to fare well for the residents of this great town. Certainly, no one wants to pay their taxes, uh, but he's going to be doing it in a way that people are going to feel comfortable. And uh, I don't want to say they're going to be happy doing it, but uh, he's going to be handling his duties fairly uh, and with care and compassion. So we're really looking forward to all of this, and I know I can speak for the town board members that were able to join me here today. Um, and also I did hear from Councilman Cochran, who unfortunately was not able to be here. So um, with that being said, uh, I think it is time for us to ask a very, very special person in his life, and someone who's special to us here in the town of Islip because she formerly worked in the town of Islip in the supervisor's office, and that's Andrew's mom, Rosemary. Whitman, if you would come forward to administer the oath of office. Andrew, please repeat after me. I, Andrew T. Whitman III. I, Andrew T. Whitman III. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. Do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of New York the Constitution of the State of New York. And the local laws and ordinances of the town of Islip, Suffolk County. And the local laws and ordinances of the town of Islip, Suffolk County. And that I will faithfully perform the duties of receiver of taxes for the town of Islip. And that I will faithfully perform the duties of receiver of taxes for the town of Islip. To the best of my abilities, so help me God. To the best of my abilities, so help me God. <laughs> 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 
As Rosemary just said, once a secretary, always a secretary. She's very, very organized and uh, did a wonderful job. Thank you so much. And thank you for our serv your service to our town all of those years. Uh, and now, without further ado, it is my honor and privilege to introduce the newest receiver of taxes for our great town of Islip, and that's Andrew Whitman. Thank you, Madam Supervisor. I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I do know, the only ones among you who will really be happy are those that have sought and found out how to serve. Albert Schweitzer, born 1875, died 1965. Dr. Schweitzer said that as a part of his speech on December 3rd, 1935, while addressing students at a local school. To me, those words have never rung truer and have not only defined the way I've lived my life up until this point, but will continue to define it as I step through the next threshold of my journey as an elected official to the residents of the town of Islip. Good afternoon, welcome, and thank you all for attending my ceremony. As I just mentioned, today begins a new chapter in my life, in my family's life, as I begin to represent the residents of the town of Islip as their next receiver of taxes. Since around the time I was 11 years old, I began a life that was committed to serving others. It started by volunteering in my church as an altar server and member of the Children's Choir, and continues to this day as an active member and Paul Harris Fellow of one of the largest philanthropic organizations, Rotary International. Rotary's motto of service above self is the quintessential motto that represents my ongoing personal and professional life. I look at this new position as my next level of service, a new way to work with the community outside of the duties and responsibilities that the Office of Receiver of Taxes entails. Theodore Roosevelt, one of my favorite presidents, once wrote, this country will not be a good place for any of us to live unless we make it a good place for all of us to live in. That responsibility rests on each and every one of our shoulders. But stop for a second and think about what he just said. This country will not be a good place for any of us to live in unless we make it a good place for all of us to live in. Now ask yourselves an honest question, privately, right now. What have you done lately to make a difference in your country, this state, this county, this town, or the block that you live on? We've all heard the phrase, think globally and act locally. We may have even told our kids to be and act this way. But we all should lead by example, correct? And that is my message right there, my mantra, my life's work. To follow the golden rule, to do unto others as I have done unto you to think globally and act locally, and to practice service above self. And, more importantly, to engage, enlist, excite, and encourage others to do the same. And it's simple, because this country will not be a good place for any of us to live unless we make it a good place for all of us to live in. An American songwriter, Jeff Warren, once said, we are all put on this earth not for ourselves, we are placed here for each other. If you are always there for others, then in time of need, someone will be there for you. Now the question is, how do we do that? How, how do you do that? You have to ask yourselves that own individual question. How I'm going to accomplish that as an elected official, I'm going to do that by keep doing what I've already been doing in my own organizations and through my organizations, just by kicking up a notch a bit. As an elected, I will look to accomplish my mission by working closely with our local community groups, non-for-profits, and service-based organizations, and help them in their respective missions to grow in the areas of awareness, recruitment, retention, and fundraising. All of these various types of organizations provide tremendous service to the community that they serve. 
all of them, some if not all of them, need help in one of those four areas. That is the goal I'm committed to, and as I enter this next stage of public service as an elected official, I hope all of you will join me in that quest. In closing, I'd like to thank several people who are in this room right now that helped me get to this point in my life. And this, of course, is where I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> To the woman that brought me into this world, my mom. And no, mom, I promise I won't mention your age. <laughs> you did it, and it's all your fault. You instilled in me, at a young age, the sense of service. You fostered this in your household by how you raised my sister Christine, a doctor, my sister Jennifer, a teacher, and me, a firefighter, now turned elected official. We have all chosen career paths that are built around service. That is your doing and debt. And my sisters and I owe everything we have, all of our successes to you and dad, for the environment that we grew up in. For that and everything else, I thank you. <clears throat> to Linda, Vicka, Teresa, Nettie, Mary, and Tracy from the Tax Receiver's Office, it has certainly been my pleasure to get to know all of you these last few months. And I look forward working side by side in the next coming months. I thank you all for taking a part in getting me here today. To my friend, mentor, and campaign manager, Joe Stasi, your advice, guidance, and most days, level-headed approach has been invaluable all these years. But that council was essential these last 10 months that helped get me here today. I am forever indebted to you. To Supervisor Angie Carpenter, Councilman John Cochran, Senator Phil Boyle, Legislator Steve Flatteran, former County Exec Steve Levy, and all other elected officials, all of your combined experience and advice that you have rendered individually and collectively have helped me get to this point. And from the bottom of my heart, I thank you for that. And I ask that we all continue to foster those relationships going forward. To John Flynn and the rest of the executive committee of the Islip Town Conservatives, you all took a chance on me giving, your giving me your designation for this position. And that decision has been an integral, if not the most integral facet, to the success that brought me here today. I not only thank you, but I sincerely hope and pledge to carry myself in such a way that continues to make you proud of that decision. To my sisters, Jennifer and Christine, my nephews, Mark, Justin, and Luke, my mother-in-law, Barbara, my best friends, Erica, Tara, and our family friends, Sharon McKenna, Mr. and Mrs. Elliott, and Rich Carpenter. Your love, support, financial, assistant, financial assistance, time, energy, and effort these last 10 months have been invaluable, and each one of you were a significant factor to what brought me here today. And last, and certainly not least, my wife, Bella, and my three kids, Catherine, Andrew, and Giuseppe. My love for you knows no bounds. To quote a Brian Adams song from Robin Hood, everything I do, I do it for you. You are the driving force that makes me strive to be a better person every single day. I want that to be an example for you, the way it was, the way my mother and father were for me. I love you all to the moon and back. Thank you very much. Let's hear it one more time for our new tax receiver. <laughs> Listening to everything that Andrew said, you know, I don't think there's a person in the room that doesn't have every confidence that he is going to put his heart and soul into every day 
um, in his new role as a receiver of taxes. And that's all you can ask from your elected officials. And we really are very, very blessed here in the town of Islip. In this room today, uh, you see people that really live that and really believe that, and that the residents of our great town deserve nothing less. So with that, I thank you all for attending. I know that Andrew is thrilled that you're all here, and there's some coffee and a wonderful cake to celebrate this wonderful occasion. Thank you again.